What's up viewers? How are you doing today? It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. I hope you had a great night rest. With that, I'm going to welcome you to be my guest on Galaxy Television. And this particular segment right here is WhatsApp. You know what WhatsApp is. It's designed to bring you your entertainment news, celebrity gist, um, movie reviews, fashion and lifestyle. And let's not forget that Ataroda and the Pepe of this program is bringing you your favorite celebrities right here on the show. I am Queen Diva and I'll not be doing this by myself. I have my brother here with me, a fine hug, and I'll just allow him to do the others. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, Lagos. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a very wonderful Tuesday morning and um, we here in the studio are enjoying ourselves. Now you know how we do it, this is still WhatsApp, this segment is called WhatsApp and um, it's um, uh, from the program Be Our Guest. Now um, I always write with the best of the best. My co-anchor is one of the best in this business and that is how we tend to follow suit. Now you know who I am, they call me Kenneth Ovina. Some of you know me as Orali A U R A L W E. Welcome to the show. That's right, that's right, that's right. Um, we'll just take a quick break, and when we come back, you'll meet our guest for the program. Don't touch the dial. Welcome back, welcome back, and if you're just joining us, you're welcome to be my guest on Galaxy Television. And this particular segment right here is what's up. Like I said before we went on the break, I said we have a guest in the studio. This one is so beautiful. She's oh. beautiful. As in, I was just staring at her, and I was like, I couldn't take my eyes off her. So let me just read her profile. <laughs> let me just read her profile briefly for you. Okay, so we have Maya Azusena. Um, dynamic four octave vocal range explores the passionate grit of blues, gospel, and rock mm -hmm. while easily entering the warmth and storytelling of the singer songwriter, regardless of Jer. All of Maya's performances seem to come from a deep place in her heart, hmm. affecting the audience in an emotional way. She has been affected me already. <laughs> Among several awards for her music and humanitarian outreach, Azusena contributed her voice to a feature performance with Stephen Malley, which earned a Grammy for Best Reggae Album of the Year and can be heard on her latest 2022 Stephen Malley collaboration, Celebrating Nina, a reggae tribute to Nina Simone on Ghetto Youth's record label. I don't want to read everything by myself. I will want her to tell us more about herself. So please welcome Maya Azusena. How are you, uh, sweetheart? I'm so happy to see you. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning. Good yes. morning, everybody. Good morning. You're welcome. You're welcome. So please, Maya, I read a little bit about <laughs> you, but I want you to just tell us more about yourself. Well, first of all, thanks again, as I said, for having me welcome, uh, this morning. Sweetie. It's a real pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my story is a very mixed story. You know, I'm a New York girl from Brooklyn, and uh, but throughout the course of my musical career, I have been able to travel to more than 40 countries. Wow. Yes, and I'm so lucky doing what I love is my job. Mm -hmm. But not only making music, but I truly believe that music has the power to... Um, to inspire and, and, and uplift and energize others mm -hmm. to make the changes that they want to make in their own lives. I mean, music has changed my life, right? We listen to music when we feel down or when we go through mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the hardest parts of our lives. Mm -hmm. I listen to music mm -hmm. that gives me courage, that makes me remember my strength. And so I always thought, okay, well, I want to make the music that does that for other people too. Yeah. So in my travels all around the world, I've been able to do a lot of humanitarian work too, empowering young people, empowering women. Um, and I'm so fortunate to have done many shows on the continent, uh, including uh, South Africa, um, Tanzania, um, Lesotho even. Lesotho. But this is my first time in Nigeria, Nigeria and wow. I'm very excited because shortly before coming, I also discovered that the largest part of my part of my African roots is Nigerian. Whoa, wow. So you know, Americans, we don't know our tribes and we don't know a lot about our roots. True. You know, and to find that out shortly before coming was really like, yeah, it all makes sense. You know, I got to come to where my ancestors started, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> and I'm I'm here for a project also. Okay, all right, Maya, tell us what first got you into music. 
Well, I, I think music was already in me when I came onto this planet. You know, I was <laughs> singing since I was a little child. Okay. And then I ended up studying opera in high school. And then um, I started my own band. And then I started to really understand not just how to sing, okay. but ha being an artist, meaning like creating my own works, representing something in the world, mm -hmm. and, you know, having a, a career doing that. So, um, yeah, so I've been a professional touring artist for more than a decade. Yeah. All right, that's, that's beautiful. Now, um, let me give you this question. You sitting right here with me feels like a huge vibe. And I'll explain that to you. Now, Maya comes from Brooklyn, New York. That is, um, in fact, exactly where my mom currently resides. All right, so she has brought an aura from, from Brooklyn, New York to Lagos, Nigeria. I'm going to ask you a question. Now that you feel like you have integrated yourself into your roots, you feel like you're back home where you actually do belong, how have you added what you have over there and infused it with your Nigerian roots. You know, sometimes it could be very hard. Um, Nigeria has diverse ethnicities, cultures, and all that. You know, um, most times in America, you have just maybe one or two. You have the red Indians, you have the whites, or I don't know how you guys put it through, but have you been able to blend these two or three types of ethnicities together, making it and putting it into your own being? You know something, I had to reconcile like all of the different um, things that are within me um, since I was young because I came into the world in a mixed race uh, as a product of a mixed, you know, cultural parents. So my father is white American, my mother is black American. Oh, wow. So from my father's side is Scottish, Irish, English roots. My mom is obviously African with Cherokee and Jamaican roots. And so I came into it not knowing where I belong, you know, in the beginning, you know, yeah. like when you're young. You're like, why can't I just fit in, you know, but I don't know what's my, what's my category. Yeah. At the end of the day, you have to realize that you are the category. Like, you just have to be yourself. And I am all of those things. I'm not required to deny some part of me. I can celebrate all that is me. So when I think about coming to Nigeria, and, and reconnecting, uh, you know, it feels like a reconnection even though it's my right. first time. I think it's more of a celebration. It's just not like a psychological, like how do I, you know, combine this and this and this. I'm just more like just be yourself, you know, be authentic, mm -hmm. be, be honest, and, and, and learn. Be a student. Yeah. You know, the way that I can integrate and be inspired by different cultures is by being a student. You know, be open, learn, you know, really talk to people, connect, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and then I will gain, I will gain just by learning, by being a student. Yeah. Well, now, um, you saying that you will learn or you're learning just by being a student brings me to this um, next question. Now, um, you are a singer, an artist, and a songwriter. Yeah. Now, how do you, um, how do you get inspiration for the kinds of songs you do. Now you've talked about um, you doing soul music and I heard something like opera. And then when she was introducing you, she said- Stephen Marley, right, yeah, reggae. Yeah. Yes, you do reggae and then you hit a four octave. <laughs> now, for you to hit those heights, you must have an incredible, incredible voice. Now, first off, give us your motivation for the kinds of songs you do and tell us how you get motivated as well. I mean, I will tell you something. I like to say that inspiration is my inspiration. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really try to think like, some of my songs are really just about talking about things that I have been through, and, you know, maybe like times when I, I like to talk about like the struggles that I've had and the hard times, but I also try to flip it inside the song. Like I went through this dark time and then I, mm. I discovered a way out or I went, this is how I got through the obstacle. Mm -hmm. So I like to show like the range from being at your lowest place and how did I get through that to Are another side. Yes. So I try to tell that in different ways through my songs. Um, I also am inspired by other people's stories. So for example, one of my songs that I love, I'm actually making a Nigerian Afrobeat remix of Are a song. Do you have any artists on it? 
Yeah. Well, uh, we literally just uh, did the first uh, recording two days ago, so we don't have a guest on it yet, but it's a Nigerian producer. Yeah. Um, the song is named Fearless, and I was in Uganda, and I was invited by a nonprofit uh, organization, organization, and I saw the works that they were doing. I went into the villages, and I sat with many women, wow. and they told me wow. their stories. And I was like, man, these women are fearless. You know, what they went through and how they, how women in general are like the, the fabric the of, so country. of society. They, yes. Yeah, they, they're struggling, but they also had some amazing stories about how they made it to where they are now. And so I was like, man, I wrote a song named Fearless, inspired by these women, but also inspired by my own story as a mm -hmm. woman. So it, it's like, I am inspired by other people as well, and these things give me like the motivation. All right, I gotta write this, you know, and then I come up with the lyrics. Okay, so let me just ask you this question. Um, which of the Nigerian artists are you looking forward to work with? Well, um, I would say that I became a fan of Kobans and Johnny Drill. Um, I would say, I know that, you know, maybe somebody would say, Burna Boy, you know, like you gotta go to the top, top. Because the um, music you do has to be. It's just, so, I guess I'm saying like, I've heard artists that, um, that when I listen to their music, I was like, wow, like, I would like to, they write or their audience is close to what I feel like my audience is. True. Um, so of course, you know, I want to work with the number one ever, you know, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, when I think about like kind of soul connection, I hear the music of someone like Johnny Drill with Kobams and I'm like, yeah, that sounds like my vibe, yeah, you know, right. yeah. yeah, I like Potter and Ken as well. And yeah, but all right. Okay. Okay. Um, I hope you are enjoying this interview with Maya. Um, so we'll just take a quick break and when we'll come back. We still have Maria with us. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, it's still being my guest on Galaxy Television. And this particular segment right here is WhatsApp. So before we went on a break, that was Maya's I am I am enough. I am enough. That was a wonderful song. Thank I you. loved it. Can you tell us about it? What inspired that? Song. So it's so okay. It's so relevant again to go to be here today. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, I am enough is the title track of my my most recent EP, my most recent album. Okay. And I am enough um, started as sort of again two sides looking at like my ancestors in America and and how their contribution to society sometimes you know most times mm -hmm. is um, ignored or not celebrated or not acknowledged at all. And, and I think about, you know, our family line and uh, each of our family line, how much maybe blood was spilled to be where we are today, you know, yeah. to, to stand on the foundation of their work and them not ever, it's never enough. What, no matter how much you give, you still won't be given the credit. You still won't There's be still, celebrated. Yeah. You, still, you still face discrimination and treated like, you know, that you don't count. And so, and then on my own personal side, there's times in my life where I felt like no matter how much I give from my heart, no matter how hard, how hard I work, no matter how much I put in, it's just always like, it's never enough. And so I, when I first started writing the song, it was like, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough. And I said, no, 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 what if I flip it? I am enough, I am enough. Even if nobody acknowledges your beauty it doesn't mean you're not beautiful exactly what if somebody doesn't acknowledge that you exist doesn't mean you don't exist you do I am enough even if it is not validated outside of me and I thought about how I wanted that message but then again creating a song that someone else could feel and make as their own you know I am enough you know that was that the meaning for the song that's beautiful <laughs> now how long have you been in Nigeria three weeks just three weeks yes so now I want you to give me just briefly your insights of this three weeks of being in Nigeria where and where have you been what have you been doing yes, no. well uh, so my impressions of course as I, I like to say you know like Lagos of course is Lagos. the main, you know, heartbeat where I've been mm -hmm. and Lagos is crazy energy crazy <laughs> energy it's like rah! You know what I'm saying? So it's like jumping in the ocean. And if you don't know how to swim, then you know you. But I do know how to swim. Okay. So I'm having a very nice time. I've met okay. inc incredible people. I'm here also as co-producer of Stars and Legends. 
So you met my uh, the creator of Stars and Legends on your show, Samuel Peterson. Yeah. Oh, so he yes. invited me as a co-producer to okay. work on this upcoming television show. And what we did in our pre-production is we did um, two big events. Hmm. Um, so the first event we did was a master class that was hosted in Unilag. Yeah. Oh, okay. And we had more than 1,000 students from different institutions come and attend our master class event. It wasn't just, you know, a workshop. Mm -hmm. We were doing everything. We gave away scholarships, etc. I mean, it was performances, co-bombs. It was one of our speakers, for example, wow. Dr. T. Mac, who's a legendary um, producer, musician, mm -hmm. artist. Mm -hmm. He was one of our speakers. Wow. So, um, so I have been getting a really cool experience uh, because I'm meeting young people, I'm meeting people from the industry who are so brilliant with their work and their minds. Yeah. So I'm getting like the fast road to seeing the best of Lagos and Nigeria. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's good. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of experiencing Nigeria and Lagos as it were, I'm going to ask you what, what kind of food have you been eating? All right, so uh, I guess the question is which night of the Nigerian cuisine have I had the I luxury want to, go into to taste? Details. I just wanted you to spit it yourself. Okay, okay. So, what I've had so far, I've had jollof, of course. I think that was the first thing. I was like, be sure that we have to try that on the first day. Um, I've had uh, okra soup. Are you serious? Uh huh. Uh, is it uh, Iba Swallow? Yes. Uh huh, with that. Um, <laughs> And basically, Pepe is in everything. So, you know, from <laughs> cookies to uh, omelets, <laughs> oh ice God. cream. No, just kidding. <laughs> is it spicy? Is it me or is this ice cream spicy? <laughs> yes, in Nigeria, uh, especially in Lagos, where you have the Yorubas predominantly, everything you eat has to you know, have um, a certain level of spice. Now, I'm, I'm going to go right to very. Um, personal and pertinent question next now um you have been around the world 40 countries to be precise um you've done um a lot of work most especially humanitarian work now mm -hmm. i want you to give us here um and viewers back home insights into the kind of humanitarian work you've done and um, <coughs> you said something about giving out scholarships at the last um, symposium you guys had an event now i want you to give us um, insights to other projects you have executed and new projects you intend to work on. Cool. I love that question. It was very in-depth. <laughs> uh, you know, for me with humanitarianism, you know, what does it even mean? Some people may say, you know, I just really, I believe in human rights. I believe that everybody should feel safe uh, and uh, should be protected in being who they are. True. And be able to be who they are it, with safety and health in their life. So um, when I do humanitarian work, because I use music as my tool, um, I'm on tour generally, but I have done a lot of tours that were um, at the I w have been invited by different American embassies around the world oh, wow. to come. And, and they um, allow me to provide concerts for free and workshops for free. So wow. I've met students, gone into villages, and for example, villages in, in Haiti, mm. you know, the island in the Caribbean. I've been to um, India. Uh, I have, the first time I ever went to Russia was going as a humanitarian. But I'm doing concerts, but my songs all have messages and things. Mm. So I'm also Confusing speaking and representing, you know, women's empowerment, um, standing against domestic and sexual violence, um, you know, the rights for everyone wow. to be safe in their, in their life experience. Um, so in, in, in the course of those concerts and shows, I do collaborations with local artists and um, <clears throat> or if somebody's doing a fundraiser, let's say for a local clinic, then I can't do the concert, but the concert raises money for that, you know. Um, here in Nigeria, what Stars and Legends is about, it's about celebrating the talents that are here, the upcoming, um, not just artists, but upcoming entrepreneurs and visionaries, um, and um, giving them a platform to show what they got, you know, but also, um, using the uh, the talent, the, the, what I call the legends of, of industry, those who have already been through it and have mm -hmm. experiences such mm -hmm. as yourselves, mm -hmm. and, and then 
and then having someone like with your experience be able to speak to young people and give them the um, tools that they need to walk in your shoes mm -hmm. in the future. So they don't make mistakes. Yes, and, and also like how to take your talents and, and, and turn them into skills. How to take your skills and turn that into a job. Mm -hmm. um, so Stars and Legends will be a reality show, but the idea is to celebrate the, the, the homegrown talent and upcoming, like the wave of the future that's here. All right, that's good. I'm going to ask you this last question before I, I, I allow Queen drag you more. Um, <laughs> in your line of industry, work, um, <laughs> entrepreneurship and all that, what would you say are the do's and don'ts? Now, um, first off, I know being in this line of work, you have to be very meticulous, you have to be smart, intelligent, you have to be very honest. Now, there are other things that, um, other factors that come together to make up um, you being yes. How do you go from this to success? One of the things that I think is so important for everybody is do not assume that your talents and gifts entitle you to success. Mm. So when I speak to young people, sometimes I say, how many of you know somebody who is uh, talented but not successful? And everybody raises their oh. hands. Okay, <laughs> how many of you know somebody who is untalented but is successful and they like laugh and they're like <laughs> okay so what's the difference hmm. now there has to be something in there your talent alone doesn't entitle you to success there is work that comes along with it work is showing up work is doing what you said you were going to do work is having realistic expectations mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. that things don't all happen overnight and instantaneously. True. We have been kind of trained by this digital uh, reality of like you just punch in four numbers and you get your money out, right? Yeah. You just press one number and you can open an app. Everything is instantaneous, but mm -hmm. real organic things, nothing is instantaneous. And if it is, you can't trust it. Why I'm saying this is, we have these things like, I, sh I have talent so I should be successful, you know, tonight. Mm -hmm. No, you have to build it. You got to work for it. You have to put in time and you have to stick with it. Think of it like farming. Mm -hmm. You know, you put a seed and you have to first make the soil ready for the seed. Then you put the seed and then you got to water and fertilize it. Then you have to wait. And then it starts to grow, but you still have to wait more before more. you have an actual fruit in your hand. Exactly. This is the sustainable um, pattern for success. If something is coming instantaneously, it also goes instantaneously. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I would say in anybody trying to build anything with an entrepreneur mindset. If mm -hmm. you have a vision, I really believe it's so important to like have a realist, realistic expectation that you have to pay some dues, you need to show up for it, and, and you can't expect everything to come to you instantaneously. It doesn't mean you're not enough. Exactly. You are enough, but, but there is a process to success to something that can last hmm. that's beautiful okay so now I want to ask you this question in Nigeria let's just see Nigeria because you're in Nigeria now there's something like an entitlement between artists and producers okay now for a hit song who would you say should take the credits for that song is it the artist or the producer now I want to get your own opinion because you're not Nigerian yes your roots is from Nigeria but I just want to hear from your own side where you come from who takes the credits? Well, my personal opinion is that all contributors should be um, valued equally. Generally, when I'm writing a song, for example, I just I try to just do evenly splits with whomever I'm writing with. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to be in a position where I'm saying, well, my three words were more important than your three, three words. words. <laughs> and then I just think that, you know, all of it comes together to make the whole and that everybody do, there should get their due credit. Okay. I don't really like these little multiple choice questions. You can only be A or B. Only this artist or only the producer should have the credit. Mm -hmm. I think all contributors should be valued equally. That's my well, opinion. What do you think? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, and that's how I operate. Now, I think, again, we have to think in the long term when it comes to business. Short term is you get yours. I'm going to get mine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be out. Mm -hmm. That is short-term thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do that, get yours and be out. But you, when you damage relationships, then you can, you don't understand how that comes back to you later. You yeah. really don't until you're in the situation. Mm -hmm. You're right. 
You're like, you know, like, like, you know, you're like in a movie scene, like, yo, man, you don't remember me? And the person's like, I do not remember you mm. because of how you treated me. Mm. You never know when you're going to need these relationships later. So value the people around you. Show respect because you just never know. You never know. No. Don't assume that you're always going to be all good mm -hmm. and that you're never going to need anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be cool to people because people will show up and save your life. Save your life. Exactly. Because you were cool to them 10 years ago. Hmm. People don't think like that because they're mm -hmm. like, I'm going to get mama, I'm going to be out. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what happens when things don't go as you thought they were? Who's going to have your back then? True. I just think it's so important and you have to respect people. That's wonderful. That's, that's a big truth. Um, <sighs> let, me, let me ask you this question. Pick three countries of the world that you've been in and tell us mm. one very important thing about each of these countries quickly. Uh, <clears throat> all right, about the country or about my experience in the country? Anyone. Okay, you said do it quick. So. <laughs> all right, so the funny thing about my story, right, coming from Brooklyn, New York, but I have spent more time in, in places that you are not like popular places to be. For example, um, I have done maybe 400 concerts, more than 100 tours in former Yugoslavia, right? That's mm. Eastern Europe, so Croatia. And that came about because the, their number, one of their number one artists, sort of like a rock, imagine like Sting, like their top but respected rock artist, mm -hmm. had invited me to sing on his album years ago. And that song won two of their version of the Grammys, right? And so he's invited me to do shows, and I've had these incredible experiences. When I perform with, his name is Giboni. When I perform as a guest with Giboni, it's like 10,000 people or more at mm. a time. Wow. So for example, in a month, I'll be going and doing some arena shows with him. And it really changed my life because I understood my ability as an artist to get on a stage in front of 50,000 people, for example, wow. and be like, yeah, like, I felt so good. And I was like, I was like, no, I will never have fear about this. I, I, but he gave me the chance to know that about myself. You know? Wonderful. That's, yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, so quick one. Um, I want you to tell the viewers that are watching you, what do you have to say to them? What do I have to say to you? <laughs> I've been saying it actually in this interview, you know, I, I believe in you, you know what I'm saying? Because I believe in myself. So why I'm, I'm so thankful to be here as an artist. I hope that you all will, that we can stay connected, that you'll be around when I drop my new music. Yes, Produce. You, you have to give your social media handles yeah. too. Everything is my name. So once you get over my name, you can find me everywhere. Maya Azucena. So at Maya Azucena. Everything okay. is backslash Maya Azucena. <laughs> So wow. I'll be around, I'll be back and forth from America and other, other countries. I'm planning to be back okay. to shoot the television show yeah. and then hopefully we can come back and hang out with you. No problem. And you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank that's you so a, much. A Maya, you're a vibe. When they're saying that you're a vibe, I wasn't expecting this much. I, you're beautiful so and nice. thank you for coming to the show. You're lovely. You have a beautiful soul. Thank I you appreciate so you so much. Thank yes. you. It's been such an honor to have you on the show. We'll do this so much more. Many other times, trust me when I tell you. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so. 